Most of us fail in life because we're afraid of what everyone around you is thinking. That's a hundred percent truth. People, one thing you have to learn early in life, I didn't learn this till later on. I don't give a mother You can't care what anybody thinks about you. If I care what people thought about me, you think I'd be yelling out here, doing a 105 pound ruck, talking shit? This is who I am. Find out who you are and own that motherfucker and tell people to go f themselves. I had to stop caring what people thought about me. I realized that everybody's f***ed up. That's the one thing I realized. I walked around and I put these people on a, on a f***ing pedestal. Everybody was better than me. So I can't tell you anything about me because you're going to judge me and I'm going to feel even worse than what I am. What I realized, once I calmed my mind down and sat back and looked at how jacked up this world is, once you realize that you are not alone, everybody that's talking to you about how jacked up you are, only thing they've done better than you is they've hidden their f***ed up world better than you have. That's all they've done. We live by the narrative of other people. When I first called a recruiter to be a Navy SEAL and I was 297 pounds, the first recruiter looked at me and said, you're not going to be able to make this, man. So what he was doing was he's projecting his energy on me. He knew he couldn't be a fuck Navy SEAL. So God helped this black guy, because I was only the 36th African-American to make it through in over 70 years. How's this black fat guy going to make it through in my ass? He wasn't even willing to try. So he's projecting it. So a lot of us who are negative people, all we do is project how we feel on other people. A lot of times I'll be in a 200 mile run or something like that, and I'm all jacked up. Body's broken, mind's broken, spirit's broken. I started to say, what if I can pull this off? When I first walked into the Navy SEAL recruiter's office, he looked at me and said, there's only been 35 African-Americans in 70 years make it through. You know what I said to myself? What if I can be the 36th? It's the what if I can pull off a fucking miracle? What if I can become someone that no one thinks I can be? And just, that, just me talking about that, I have the hair going up on my arms because it makes me just like, what if? So what happens is that there's a lot of negative people walking on the planet Earth who are afraid to try because everybody, a lot of people are very negative in this world. So we are afraid to fail. Why? I told you, man, you shouldn't even try it, dude. Just chill out, relax. Why are you so crazy? Why are you so obsessed? So all that stuff drives the uh, quitting mind, I call it. The mind wants to quit. The mind's tired. The mind thinks it's very deserving. So the biggest problem in this world is other people, not yourself. It's other people in your head. They are puppet mastering you pretty much on your life. My next door neighbor two months ago, she just killed herself. Tons of veterans I know, they killed themselves. I got an email two weeks ago from a family member that an 11 year old boy killed himself from people at school bullying him. One thing about life is that people in life they are the ultimate puppet masters. They exploit your weakness and they love to walk you around life and own space in your head. One of the biggest ways to cut those strings and walk on your own two fucking feet to your own destination in life is to build self-respect, self-esteem, self-discipline, all those things. Stay hard is not just about going to the fucking gym. Stay hard is about going that extra step in your Look, you can't. That's what builds self-esteem and self-respect. Stay hard. Because I realized once I was talking to myself the right way and all this shit wasn't in my mind, wow. I went from this piece of shit, kid who thought he was dumb, not successful, insecure, who stuttered when I first saw somebody, to a person who can now do all these things just because I now control my own mind. When you get to the point where you really fucking don't care, you're dangerous. You become very, very dangerous. Mm. I'm not saying don't care like, I don't care if I do that. No, when you don't care about other people and how they view you, mm. about how you walk, how you talk, how you dress, where you want to go with your life. With success in life comes more haters. Don't make them hurt your feelings. Use them for fuel. Use them for energy. In times of need, put them on the fucking mental Rolodex in your mind. And when you don't want to do shit, roll through your brain. Pull up that motherfucker that you need. That person who said you couldn't do something. Work 
fast enough, good enough, smart enough, where the fuck it may be. Use it for energy. Instead of killing them with kindness, torture them with fucking success. In life, we have to continue pushing past the odds. Use everything this world has to give you for fuel. Stay hard. You know, growing up, I didn't want to tell anybody I wanted to be in the military. Because why? Some of my black friends, I was afraid of what they think. I was afraid of what other people thought about me. So now, when I go in the military, I know you want to fucking join the military. Yeah, I ain't telling you because I'm afraid of what you thought. Once again, man, you're allowing other people to shackle your mind. It's the, it's, the, it's the worst thing in the world. So when I saw the military uniform when I was growing up, I thought to myself, if I can get that uniform on, I would find honor in wearing the uniform. So not only did I want to be in the military, I wanted to be in special ops. But I realized to be in special ops, you gotta know how to swim. So I got a how-to book on swimming. The first page was easy, float. So I went to the pool, tried to float. I sank right down to the bottom. I realized I was naked and boring as hell. The more I failed, the more my father's words were creeping to my mind about how I'm not good enough. All this other bullshit he said to dehumanize me. As time went on, I started realizing the more I didn't quit, the more self-respect I gained. And the power was all mine. In life, it's important to do one thing. Many people will try to dehumanize you. It's up to you to find self-respect and dignity in yourself. You don't need a uniform to have honor. You need to have pride in yourself, dignity, stay hard. You have to first accept it before you can fix it. A lot of people walk around, oh man, I'm good, I'm good. No, you're not. It, you have to accept what you're not. You have to, and people don't want to do that. And that's the only way you can fix it. You have to accept it first before you can go on the journey. A lot of folks never even start the journey, man. They never start the journey because they live in this fake life that who they want to be, they act like they are, but they're not because they haven't fixed all this stuff yet. You got to fix this first before we can start our journey in life. So that's why I have them make this list. You fix these problems, now your journey can begin because you no longer care about how people are judging you. When, you. when you care more about how someone's judging you, you're going to stay right there. There's no forward momentum. Do you think you could go the other way and maybe become a bit cold if you don't care what anyone thinks? Your fiance, your kids, you know, they're not the people around, do you not care what they think? See, that's the thing about it. You have to have an understanding of what not caring means. If your fiance and your kids don't believe in you, you can't care what they think. That means you chose the wrong support staff. So that's why a lot of people don't understand one another. Your support staff has to be like, if I want to go out and do Whatever it is, my support staff is, you know, my fiance. If she's like, you know what, you know, I don't think that you should be doing that. I have to take it, you know, why? So I can be open-minded. So, so, so why are you saying this? But if she's saying it because of her, you know, that's not, that's not the right thing. Because I need backing to do what I'm gonna do. Open-mindedness, I need support. So you gotta be very clear thinking about all that stuff. For instance, there's all these things that are on TV, and we have all these news people judging people who f up in life. And yeah, they made big mistakes. But that person who is judging you on TV, I guarantee you that that news person is saying, I'm glad that my shit didn't come out. I know that about people. So if you want to sit back and judge how jacked up I was and how messed up my life was, Merry Christmas. Go for it. Have a good time. But I'm smiling at you right now, knowing you have a secret that you're not willing to share. It gives you a lot of power when you're able to go on podcast this big and say hey tell me I'll tell you anything you want to know I no longer care there's a lot of power in that to be able to put your life on a billboard for the whole world to see and say judge it man judge it like just me talking about it makes me feel good and that's and that's another thing about it when you are willing to talk about how jacked up you are the strength that big rock that you carry it just starts to come off you it just starts to come off. That's why I do it so often. I'm like, hey man, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I'm tired of being afraid. 
I'm tired of not telling you shit. I'm tired of lying about how good I'm not. I used to always want people to accept me and like me. So I became who they were. If you like something and I didn't like it, I liked it because you liked it. Become unapologetic of who the f you are in your life. If you get after it, you're a hard motherfucker. Get after it. You gotta make yourself better than what you think you are. And what that requires is people to not fucking understand you, not know you, not get you at all. Look at you like you're off. Look at you like you have a problem. Don't worry about that shit. Be unapologetic. Get after it. Stay hard. Be who the fuck you are. My circle's very small. I made sure I didn't handpick these people. Because I'm like, so so you don't want people in your corner that are like, oh, let me pat you in the back for whatever the fuck you do. I don't want people patting on the fucking back because I fucking woke up in the morning. No. So you don't want that. You want people who are honest with you who are going to tell you what the fuck is honest. Honest and truthful people. So someone who's honest and truthful, who has lived and is accountable for their own personal life, that's who you want in your corner to say, hey, man, you know what? You're pretty fucking dumb for doing this, dude. Like, this is not smart. Or you're being a, you know, you're being a turd today. You're not getting after it. That's who you want in your corner. So you don't want a lot of people, hand-picked people to be in their corner who kiss their fucking ass. You don't want that. The most important step we're ever taking in life is our next one. A lot of us get our feet stuck in concrete. We get our feet stuck in concrete because we're afraid to make enemies. One thing in life, you're gonna always have haters. Embrace them. If you can walk on fucking water, trust me, your haters will say, you can walk on water because you can't fucking swim. Shut the fucking noise out. Embrace the fact that people don't like you. It means you're doing something right. Stay hard. Stay in the fight. But I don't respect a lot of people. Because how am I going to respect you if you're not fucking grinding every day? Mm. And I don't mean working out, getting to the gym. Really going out there and grinding. So if you don't know how I'm living my life, how am I going to respect you? So you have to be a hard worker, period, Donna. You got to work your fucking ass off. That's where I gain respect for you. Mm. So if you're working hard every day, now you have an opinion in my eyes. But if you're just a guy who talks shit and you live this fucking life of talking shit, come on, dude. I understand one thing. You're just talking shit. But if I see you every fucking day of your life trying to be better, every day, going through all the wickets to be better. You got my attention. Mm. I respect you. Now. So we first have to face the real you. The real me is David Goggins. The real me is a guy looking at you right now saying, I don't want to be on this show right now because I used to stutter as a kid. And I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid that here in a second, I'm going to start fucking stammering and stuttering and the whole world is going to know that I have all these issues. But that's when I see right now, okay, Goggins, you got to go on this fucking show. That's Goggins. Goggins is saying, okay, David Goggins, you're a punk. Life made you this way. We can't live like this. We can't live in fear. We can't live in judgment. We can't be afraid of what the fuck people right now are looking at me saying about me. We cannot be afraid of that. That's Goggins. Goggins saying, fuck all of you who don't like me, who don't want it. And that person then comes in. But you have to be David Goggins and say, man, I'm afraid of this. I'm fucking here. Life made me this way here. I stutter. I, I have these issues with uh, reading and writing and I'm fat and I'm insecure. You have to face that in that dark room. In that dark room is who you are. But in that dark room is where you have to create another human being that walks out of that dark room to face who you are. That's the only way you're going to get over all those things. You have to create someone else. Not like you have two different personalities. It is you. But you have to find strength. And that visualization of almost me cracking out Goggins, like almost like that Superman cape, like, like, like I'm coming out a different person, a person that doesn't give a fuck about anything. That's Goggins.